Good afternoon and welcome to Green TV for January 6, 2012. Joining me today is Cody Bills and I'm Brock Shimbino. Win of the day, mostly lower across the board. Corn is unchanged, soybeans down 15, wheat in Chicago and Kansas City both down 4.5. Most of the action today was due to a stronger dollar index and abysmal export sales report. Cody, why don't you take us through those numbers? The weekly export sales was bearish all around. Corn came in missing its expectations at 299,000 uh, metric tons versus an expected 500,000 metric tons. Soybeans missed expectations coming in at 281,000 metric tons and wheat coming in at 139,000 metric tons also missing expectations. Take a look at corn in terms of progress. We're at week 17 and we are ahead of pace 65 million bushels. However, that positive position slid by 3 million bushels since last week. If you look at soybeans, it's a slightly different story. We're 57 million bushels behind where we need to be to meet USDA expectations, sliding 6 million bushels since the previous week. The trend continues to be down. That's the bar that we're looking at. That was uh, this latest uh, report, and you can see it just missed uh, the red line, which is our expectations here, by a significant amount. If you look at the sales progress, you can see the trend. The trend has been just very, very ugly uh, for the last seven weeks. Soybeans in particular losing ground. I think we're going to have to see that reflected uh, in the USDA report on the 12th. I think they're going to uh, lower export sales expectations here. They're, they're, I, I think they're just going to have to do it just because our position has not improved since the last report. You know, one thing that uh, uh, we see export sales lagging, but ethanol is red hot, and we had the last uh, we had the last report for 2011 here. Uh, Brock, can you take it uh, take us through it and kind of describe to us what's what's going on in terms of ethanol? Yeah, basically over the last few weeks we've seen pretty good ethanol production, and in the last week of December we did see us hit a record high of production at about 6.7 million barrels produced. This was actually well ahead of the, the USDA's projection on corn used for ethanol uh, by about 7 million bushels. So I'm looking at these numbers, they're pretty strong, and pretty, uh, making a pretty good bullish case for uh, the ethanol industry and for corn prices in general. But one thing to keep in mind is that the, the blender's tax credit did come to an end on December 31st, and we have large uh, stocks of ethanol right now, which is about 6.45% ahead of where we were last year at this time. Well, you know, I, I think what we're going to see here for ethanol, uh, in 2011, we were running ahead of the mandate. I think we're going to see a decline in production for ethanol to get us right about on par with the mandate once those, uh, those tax credits are taken off the table. Uh, you know, take that into account with the fact that we're 6% uh, ethanol stocks are 6% over what we saw last year. And I think we're going to see the first quarter of 2012, we're going to see ethanol production lag and not be such a hot, uh, big player uh, that we saw in the fourth quarter of 2011. I'm right there with you, Cody. I do think we will see a pullback in the production of ethanol. Another thing to keep in mind is their margins have been narrowing over the last several weeks as we've had a pretty big rally in the corn market in general. Yep, that sounds about right. Now we're going to take a quick commercial break. We've got informer numbers to digest both domestically and abroad. We'll see you in a short bit. I used to have several sites. Uh, now I kind of like the grower's edge. It gives me that cash max. You can tell it which markets you're looking for and it will tell you what your highest uh, net back is based on the price they're paying at that time and the basis that they're paying. And uh, that's pretty handy because I don't have to go to so many different sites. Welcome back to Grain TV. Informa came out with its best guess for production numbers for 2011. Brock, can you walk us through them? Yeah, it looks like Informa is anticipating the USDA increasing production here domestically for corn and soybeans. Corn looks like it's going to get a bump of about three-tenths of a bushel per acre, which gives us an increase of production by 30 million bushels. Soybeans also looking to get an increase by half a bushel per acre, which gives us an increase in total production by 34 million bushels. You know, this didn't seem to surprise the market much at all. The market seemed to take it in stride. Do you think the USDA has any surprises for us on Jan 12th? 
A surprise out of the USD is always in the cards. In the last five years in a row, we've actually had an up limit or down limit move on the day of the report. So for producers out there, you need to be prepared for volatility on January 12th. We're going to switch gears here, switch uh, internationally. Let's take a look at Informa's projections for Brazil. You can see that they lowered their production estimates by 3% for corn and 3% for soybeans. Argentina, a slightly different story. Uh, corn was actually lowered by 11% and soybeans by 3 Now, these, uh, these percentages that they lowered production estimates by were in line with crop cast forecasts earlier this week. Uh, you know, I think that all of this is really baked into the market already. Right now, what the market is focusing on is the weather, uh, particularly in Argentina. If we don't get rains in the middle of next week, there's a good chance we're going to put a, uh, an even larger premium uh, that, that is already established in the futures market. Make sure you tune into Grain TV all next week for updates on the weather situation shaping up in South America. Or you can follow us on Twitter, check us out on Facebook, or get a hold of us at 877-GRAIN07. Have a good weekend.